for fast, cheap, and reliable Madden 21 Ultimate Team coins, make sure you guys go check out my sponsor, U4GM Coins. Use code Venom at checkout for 5% off your order. Yo, what's good guys? Venom Fire here back from the video, and today I'm be bringing you guys yet another offensive scheme. This time we're in the gun tight offset tight end. This is a formation that a lot of people sort of counted out um, with the addition of zone drops. Corner outs aren't as effective, especially as last year. This was one of the most popular formations. Um, but being as I've ran this formation since Madden 17, I wasn't really ready to give it up when the lab and I found a ton of great plays and setups for you guys. Um, and it, for those players that don't like to be off meta, those who don't like to run bunch and trips, those are probably the two meta formations right now. This is definitely a great way to mix it in, mix in something unique and still effective. So um, as far as the playbook that I'm in, I'm in the New Orleans Saints offense playbook. This is also in Packers, but... Uh, Saints actually has two plays that I'm going to be talking about in this video that Packers doesn't, so keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, tight offset, if you don't know how to get four wide receivers there, what you're going to do is flick that right stick to the right once. That's going to be your packages. You're going to put it to the halfback one package. Uh, and this is one of the only formations besides those spread type sets that actually gets four wide receivers. So you see we got four wide receivers here. Um, Trey Y Flex used to, but this year you actually cannot get four wide receivers. Very unfortunate. Um, but in tight offset, you still have so much speed, and that's a reason why I like it. Uh, as far as my audibles, I went ahead preset them. We got 0-1 Trap, we got Inside Zone, we got Saints at Back Wheel, and YOHB Swing. The other play I'm going to be talking about is Saints In. Um, but again, we'll talk about that later in the video. We're, I'm actually going to start out with the run plays here. Running the ball is definitely a key tactic in this year's game. I know it's pretty easy to pass the ball. Um, but if you really want to be successful, uh, the way to win games this year is going to be balanced schemes. Uh, those people that run the ball, you know, 50-50 or run the ball 40% of the time past 60 will be more successful. I've won more games playing that way. Uh, and you really want to start out with the run. You want to continue to pound the rock. Even if you're getting four yards of carry, you're going to get your opponent worried about him. You have to keep him honest to the run to be successful. You want him to... Um, be worried about it bring his user down in the box that allows you to go up top more often and things like that so tight offsets really good run formation this year usually in years past it would be considered as just a pass formation but it's really good to get with the run plays and we got the 0-1 trap which is a particularly better run play than last year um, we also got the inside zone which is really good so I'm going to start out with the 0-1 trap now, 0-1 trap, it's good just running at stock. Uh, you will see, look at how big the gap is. Now, 0-1 trap is one of those runs where uh, it is relatively difficult to get to the second level with these inside runs, specifically out of um, tight sets because the blocking downfield on those outside corners and things like that just isn't as good as a ace twins, whatever formation, but it still is gonna be very solid. You see the blocking, we're getting you know 10 yards up the field before we even get hit once. And that's really where this formation becomes successful. Now, um, always I feel like using motion helps the run game, and that's no different this year. So um, I've labbed and I've tried out different players motioning in. Uh, and probably my favorite way to run this is gonna be to motion Valdez Scantling or this opposite side receiver. Uh, the way I do is I just motion him inside and I'm sort of spamming A like this. Now this, you saw Grady Jarrett right there. He just got instant block shed on our left guard. Our left guard, Jenkins, it's not the highest overall. You saw him get an instant block shed, but who was right there to pick up Grady Jarrett to prevent the tackle for loss and ultimately help us pick up 10 plus yards? It was Valdez Scanling. That's the reason that I, it basically just gives you another pulling guard and you see the yardage is gonna be the same. So uh, whether this corner is blocked or not is really not gonna make a difference on this play too much. Obviously, unless you get perfect blocking and you could take it to that second level, but really, you just want to block him in. You see again there, Grady Jarrett gets the instant shed. He's there to save, you know, us from losing yardage and ultimately helps us pick up that first down. Now again, you obviously don't have to motion. That's just an extra step. Uh, and the other way you could do the motion with Valdez Scantling is to sort of wait a second, wait for him to like cross formations. Um, obviously, when you do that, he doesn't really help on Grady Jarrett. And one thing that's kind of weird that I have noticed is when I don't motion, I seem to get better blocking on that pulling guard. I'm not sure what the reason for that is, but you see um, Gray Jarrett really hasn't got an instant shed without us motioning over. Uh, the other player that you can motion over is Funchess, so I sort of motion him over right there. Um, again, he doesn't really do too much, so I, that time I actually snapped him early. Um, but again, you can sort of wait like right around here. 
and then he can actually pick up that weak side guard, pretty much allowing you to go to the outside. So if you're an outside runner, you prefer running outside the uh, you know tackles uh, and really being able to get sticky in the open field. This is probably the way you run it. And again, you see, um, obviously your blocking is not going to be perfect with wide receivers instead of tight ends, but it still can be usable. So I just gave you guys three, four different ways to run just the 01 trap. Uh, with that being said, let's move on to the inside zone. Now again, um, when I come out and tight offset, I'm running the ball until he proves he can stop it. So if he's in a 146, if he's in a dollar, if he's in a 335, I am continuing to run the ball, whether I'm getting three yards of carry or not, um, just to, you know, get him out of the defense, get him blitzing certain players, maybe he spies the safeties, who knows. Um, but now let's go to the inside zone. Inside zone is probably the better run to get to the outside. You saw right there, we have all that potential. Uh, to get to the outside, one thing about inside zone, this is a tactic I'm sure some of you know, but some of you might not know. Make sure when, he, when you're running pretty much any run, uh, besides on one trap, that's pretty much the exception. Uh, when you're running the ball, let go of turbo until you reach like that level. So you saw it. I wasn't holding turbo until really that linebacker on the left side gets blocked. So uh, this left guard, he's going to block the player that's ID'd. Uh, and if I just sprint without, or if I just sprint holding turbo, he's not going to get picked up. So I let go and then I pick him up. Now, even though he got a shed, uh, you saw if he were to hold the block like he did in the, you know, previous run plays, I'm off to the races. So again, I'm letting go of turbo. Then I'm pressing it once I get there. And that's also going to help you, you know, sort of speed up, speed through the tackles, be able to get to the outside uh, and really do whatever you want. Again, you see, I'm not really picking up 40 yards per carry, uh, but I'm consistently getting five plus. And again, it's not going to be, you know, the best run ever. It's not going to work 100 out of 100 times. That player might come on blocks also, but you can still mix in some motion with the inside zone. Maybe I do this. Uh, and then he's pretty much guaranteed to get blocked. You saw even with the worst run sick of my life, we picked up 10 yards. So again, um, it's going to be really frustrating for your opponents. If you want to sort of bait him, maybe you do something like this. Um, but again, uh, just mix things up. Maybe, you know, he blows up your inside zone. When you motion that guy, you motion somebody else and it's a touchdown. Usually the universal way to run this inside zone is to motion Funchess out uh, and run it like this. That sort of shifts the focus to that right side uh, with his user. Um, but again, it doesn't really matter. You saw... As long as this middle linebacker is getting blocked, it's successful. And if you don't want to tell, uh, that's a pretty successful way to do it. Uh, but again, don't want to talk about the run plays for longer than I already did, about seven minutes. So I do apologize. But again, this formation is only successful with the run. If you're going to throw up, you know, 20, 25 times out of this formation, you probably won't be winning a lot of games. Uh, and really... You, obviously you become worse when you fall down especially out of this set if you're running this formation you fall down two scores you're in a pretty tough spot without being able to run the ball but let's move on to the pass plays and i think it all starts with the y out hp swing probably the best stock pass play one of the best stock pass plays for years you got a deep post you got a corn route and then you got a drag um, the universal probably best setup is just to throw a on a drag it's a really good play to quick snap i just throw a on a drag block my running back or Throw in on a drag, max protect, or block my running back, and then I can snap the ball, get him stuck in between adjustments. Now I know uh, that I'm going in zone, and I'll try and mix in different coverages as we go on in the video. Um, but as far as just showing the setups, just keep in mind that these setups will be successful against man and zone coverage. Obviously, it depends, but I'm going to give you guys so many setups that um, really you can go test out yourself if that is your concern. So you see. Uh, we, got the two, uh, we got the two drags underneath. Obviously, you can quick snap any of those over the middle if he's not using them. If it's stock main coverage, that corner out's going to beat it. Whether you have a 60 overall or a 99 overall receiver running that corner out, it's just so good that you see Alan Lazard, uh, even a guy like him, is going to get pretty much wide open on that against zone and man. Uh, again, if your opponent's running like some weird stock cover three, make sure that you run the corner out on the short side. That's my tip. Uh, against cover three, the corner out on the short side is so much more open than the wide side really is successful. And, you know, the reason that this is so good is because sometimes people mess up their zone drops. So um, even leaving them default, they won't be defended. They really have to move them up. And that's kind of what you're forcing them to do right immediately when someone sees tight offset. They're going to put their curl flats on 20 yards. Uh, so really the way to run this formation this year is to attack both the flats in the middle of the field. So that first setup, definitely not good for the middle of the field, but we got other setups. The second setup, it's just gonna be A on a hitch and X on a flat. Again, this is probably not the best setup for the middle of the field, 
um, but it still is usable. You see this is more of a low ball type setup, even with 70 overall L and Lazard, we're able to get pretty much wide open on that. Again, we got the hitch in the middle of the field, which usually will be open. Uh, not only does that get open, but it usually pulls down the zone and really opens up this post shot in the middle of the field. So you see with the hitch, hitches are really good of pulling zones down. So example, uh, if I wanted to go with a setup, I could actually do this. Just put both players on hitches. Uh, in that case, I would motion Val the scaling out, uh, and that would actually pull down the curl flat really well, or I could hit him late in the play. Uh, so that's a concept that a lot of spread players use. They use the hitch corner out concepts or just the hitches you know, wide in general. Uh, so really you can use that to your advantage, but you could also just use like a random out route or a flat route or a zig, whatever. Um, but again, the main concept or the main thing you're focusing on with this concept is the hitch in the post. Obviously the hitch, you could throw it right there, or I could wait till he gets pulled down and Funchess gets wide open. So again, that's that setup. And I'm not going to really have too many universal setups for this play. I'm just going to go through some things, some freestyling things I do. Uh, and again, that's usually what I like to do out of this formation, just sort of freestyle. Moving on to ooh, our next play, though, or our next setup, rather. Uh, I'm just going to throw a X on a streak, A on a little drag, and B on an out. So it's going to look like this. Um, what I'm doing in here is I'm going to motion and funch this over uh, and pretty much create one of those little out wheel route concepts that's really good against zone coverage, particularly man coverage. Uh, this won't, really won't be your play. Um, because, I mean, you still will have the corner to drag, but again, it probably is not going to be the best against man just because you got a couple of useless routes out there. Um, but as far as zone, it's going to be very successful. This wheel route out of tight, pretty much at any formation is successful. Wheel route's super underrated, and this year I love sending my running back out, even though he dropped the ball there. Uh, obviously, this is probably a route you want to low ball, I would say. Uh, low ball pass lead inside type concept, but again, I could still throw you know A on a curl. Maybe I throw X on his flat or X on like a zig. You could really just freestyle with this type of concept very consistently. At, or consistently, I could throw B on a flat, whatever the case is. I could check down right there. Again, just mix in sort of. You get one little route combo you like. I love the wheel to out route, and then I can mix in 20 different things out of it. Again, I could always go with this hitch type concept, maybe a curl, maybe an out, maybe a wheel like this. Again, just giving you guys a couple of ideas on things you could do uh, right here. Obviously, the corner out, that was a terrible read. Um, but again, that corner out is going to be better on the short side anyways. But uh, obviously, we know that there was a cover three beater last year. This cover three beater is really not the best. It's just going to be the corner out. But the corner out actually does get pretty open late in the play. So if it is zone, that corner out... If it's deep enough, it can actually get over the top of zones, and if not, you can actually playmaker it up. Um, but anyways, let's move on to our next play, Saints Hatback Wheel. We got this in Saints in left. Saints Hatback Wheel, really good. You got this stock wheel route, and it's going to be even a better wheel route than just the one that you can put them on. Uh, you see it's a little bit of one of those shortened one that you see out of U-Trips and Gun Bunch, Mesh Post particularly. Uh, with this setup, my or with this play, my favorite setup is going to be be on a flat. Uh, smart route A, smart route Y, and put X on a hitch. It's going to look like this. What I like to do again, I like to motion MVS over. And then again, you're going to have pretty much the same routes open. I'll have the hitch corner route concept. I'll have that wheel route to flat concept open. Pretty much two high lows. Uh, and then we all obviously have Adams in the middle. If I don't like that dig route, I could throw him on a curl. The problem with the curl is that it's really easy to work from curl to wheel route. So if they were to double flat on the left, they can really take away this play very easily if that were the case. Uh, so if that were the case, I'd probably just leave X uh, sort of in the slot, not actually motion him over. Um, but you see just a pretty base concept. Again, this isn't really a play I mix in a whole lot, but you can, it's really good to run at least two, three, four times a drive. Again, I, you can really route combo. This is a really good formation in particular to just freestyle. Um, maybe I do something like this or whatever. Again, I could just mix in different things, something like this. You know, never know. These weird route combos can always work. Uh, so again, don't be afraid to mix in certain things like that. But again, as far as universal setups, I don't really have too many. Um, but again, you can always, like I said, you mix in things like this, you will always be successful on offense. Uh, and as long as you're giving him different looks, uh, he will always be confused. Not sure how that's not a catch, but it is what it is. With that being said, let's move on to our last play now.
Now moving on to our last play, you see it's going to be the Saints Inn. Now Saints Inn, I'm actually going to like it a little bit flipped. I like this little poster on the left to be on the wide side. Uh, so we're going to do that, and I'm actually going to go into man coverage here. Uh, let's go with the cover one, Robert. So uh, this is going to be particularly better play against man, so I just want to sort of clear out these routes so you can take a look. We got um, RB on this little table route, uh, so I just sort of cleared out so you could see the route clearly because they were running to the same spot. So you got RB on this table. That's really good, uh, specifically against man coverage. You also got B on this little hook, uh, so we're just going to you know, hot route him to a drag, obviously. So we got a drag, we got this little running back route, and then with these other routes, what I like to do is just throw Y on a little clear out. He's kind of in the way of everything. Uh, and then we have this nice post route that's actually pretty good against man. Uh, it's even better against zone, but against man, with a good receiver, you can get it open. Uh, ran that with Adams a lot and regs. Uh, and then we have this little route that's on the right that's gonna beat man coverage. If you do have a um, hot route master or slot apprentice, you can throw him on a corner out as well. Um, with that being said, we can just snap the ball. We'll get the running back route, how badly he torches one of the best coverage linebackers in the game, Deion Jones. It's going to be really good, really difficult. You're going to force him to use, or you're going to force him to maybe even throw like a hard flat, but pretty much no, nothing can even cover this besides, you know, a user. Obviously if, they, obviously, if they get really weird with their adjustments, maybe they can stop it. But this is another play where you can come out, snap the ball really, really quickly. Uh, the drag... You see Devin Funches, who's not even the best receiver, able to get pretty good separation on that little drag route against one of the fastest corners in A.J. Terrell. Um, but again, really this is a play I only pretty much, or actually I do run this pretty much the same as Saints Hatback Wheel. I like to mix in those three pass plays. Uh, you see MVS, he does have separation right there. Um, so with a better receiver, obviously would get more open. Even if you have a route technician, that's going to be just a complete burn. Uh, so if I were to run that with a guy like Adams, he would get very good separation. Again, Wise just on a clear out. Um, but you obviously have Devontae. Pretty much you should get wide open on that route. Again, sort of like an out route. Uh, it's a little bit deeper, though, which is nice. And again, this is another play where I can just come out, boom, wide on a streak, be on a drag, snap the ball. Very, very easy. And look at the separation Aaron Jones is going to get against man coverage. I know he dropped that, but still... Very good separation, and yeah, it's pretty much going to do it for the video. Again, you could run this against zone as well, uh, but yeah, it's going to do it for the video. If you guys enjoyed, hit that like, hit that sub button, and peace. I'm out of here.